Nathan West, uh, Darlington School. This is uh, the third year at Darlington, 12th year overall. Um, started off coaching at, in Anniston, Alabama at Sykes High School, which is my alma mater. Went over to Oxford uh, High School for two years. Had an opportunity from there to uh, coach at the collegiate level. Um, and so I coached at Iowa Central in Fort Dodge, Iowa for four years. Um, met my wife, had a little boy, and uh, we moved down to Apalachicola, Florida, took over a high school program there. Um, had two really good years, ended up winning district championship, region championship, and uh, taking the team to the final four there in Lakeland, Florida. Um, and from there is when Darlington School here in Rome, Georgia, um, kind of started recruiting me, and, and here we are now. It's going on my third year at Darlington. Um, really just my first full year, or first, when I say first full year, I mean postseason, preseason, the whole nine yards. And so going into my third season here was my first summer with the team. Uh, my first year here at Darlington, I, I got here late, got here in August. Uh, my second year, obviously COVID. We had COVID protocols, so while we had, we didn't have any games, or we just had practices there in late June, July. And so now we've kind of had a full season under our belt with a with a young team, uh, which is very very bright for our future. Uh, we got you know three four guys with a lot of experience that, that have that played a lot for me as sophomores. Um, this past year we made a Sweet 16 run. We returned everybody. Um, and we're still young. Uh, we have a, a big sophomore class who we're really excited about. Uh, we have a couple really good returning juniors that started for us this past year uh, within Braden Bell, who's our point guard who led us in three point percentage the past two seasons would be a, a junior point guard for us. And then Simon Palouche, who is 6'5", junior from Poland, uh, who we expect big things out of, who actually just helped win his junior league national championship over in Poland this summer. Senior wise, we have, we have a young man named Patrick Shelley, 6'4", um, averaged 16 and 10 this past year, led us in steals and assists. Uh, really just overall leader and captain for our team, really since he was a sophomore. Uh, just a guy that never signed up to be a leader, just, it just, it just that is, is, is what he is. So we just overall really excited about our guys returning and our youth um, you know, moving forward from now on. Um, you got two guys on my staff since I came, came to Darlington who it's kind of a different situation in, in schools I've been in the past. Um, Jared Willerson and, and Brent Bell have both been with me since day one who did not know who I was when I moved to Rome, Georgia. Um, kind of sat down with me in my office and, and, and saw the vision that I had for our program and our system in the school and just with not, without any hesitation just jumped on board and wanted to be a part of it. Uh, they've been very supportive of, of everything within our program and what we've done with our guys and uh, I, I'm very fortunate to have two guys like that uh, on my team. Uh, when, COVID, when COVID initially hit, obviously it was new for everybody. Um, but one of, one of the things that I've always preached and, and kind of learned, it was nothing that I, I made up, but it was always just kind of control the controllables, control what you can control. And in and, and this situation with COVID-19, it was something that you know we didn't have any control over as far as what was going to happen next. But we could control what we were going to do during that time. So one thing that I thought that was very beneficial for our team is uh, once a week, we would have uh, Zoom meetings. Um, and, and guys would be all over, really, all over the place, kind of isolated. Uh, we were, during these meetings, one, we'd just kind of catch up and hang out. We wouldn't really talk about basketball much, just kind of how everybody's doing, family's doing, and just kind of check on each other. Uh, and then two, during these meetings, I would usually have some type of guest speaker or somebody that they have never met before, whether it's in the coaching field, professional field, uh, to, to speak with them, kind of give them words of encouragement, words of advice moving forward. Uh, things they, maybe they've done within their company or team. And so that's one thing we did once a week with those guys during the COVID period. Another thing we did is um, 
and, and which was kind of piggybacked with our, with our football program, was we would have what we call still sunrise. And uh, on Mondays during COVID at 6 a.m., we would expect those guys to, to log into their Zoom uh, and we would, we would work out. And uh, it was pretty much whatever they had at their house or garage or on their carport. And, and we would go through a 45 minute to an hour workout. And this could range from anything from uh, agility, endurance, speed and conditioning, basketball skills. Uh, so we just, I guess going into the COVID and, and the guidelines, we wanted to make the best out of that situation if there was such thing and keep our guys engaged. Let them know that we still were there for them and cared about them outside of athletics, but then also want to know that, hey, if we're going to go through this, we're going to get something out of it too. And uh, that was very beneficial for us, especially when we came back. Not everybody has aspirations to move on to the next level, which is fine, which is great. Um, so some kids do. So one thing we talk about is, is even if this is it for you, just get the, have the best possible experience you can have. You know, and that's, a, that's important to us as coaches as well. We want to make sure we provide that experience for those guys. And at the same time, you know, I tell those guys that maybe don't have aspirations, you know, how do you want to be remembered once you leave? Uh, as a player and as a, as a teammate uh, and being as part of the team. So those things are really important to us going into the season for those guys that maybe this might be it for them, they know that. Um, it's just, you know, how do you want to be remembered? The second thing, you know, we're talking to those guys that do have aspirations. You know, is it, for them it is one, you know, we don't want them to try to do too much. Just play their game, understand their abilities understand you know uh, that the game will come to them that if they have a chance to go to the next level especially now the way the game has changed at the collegiate level with the transfer portal with the covid with the super senior scholarships are limited uh, to just be patient not get, get discouraged uh, and, it, and like i said it just goes back to what we've always preached control what you can control which is your attitude and your effort uh, those two things there if you can always control those we preach on probably every day uh, things will work out for you. Um, one thing I, when I got out of coaching in college and got into high school, not necessarily worried about, but one thing I wanted to be um, just kind of apprehensive about was, you know, the relationship between myself and the summer coaches and the AU coaches. Uh, one thing I try to do with my guys is build a really good relationship where they can trust me with just about anything they're going to be dealing with. And that's off the court as well, but also on the court. And in saying that, I would hope that they would trust my opinion on, on maybe who or where they would want to play for in the summer. Um, having the ability to, to coach at, the, ne at the, the next level kind of helped me out moving forward with helping connect guys with AAU coaches, meaning I knew some guys that maybe I trust, or maybe I knew that what were in the business, not for themselves, but for the kid. And I think at the, there's a lot of guys like that that are in the business for the, for the student athlete. And if that's the case, you know, the, the relationship between high school coach and AAU coach should be really good because at the end of the day, we want what's best for the, for the kid. Um, and so a lot of our guys that do play AAU basketball, I, I'm in contact with their AAU coaches uh, throughout the summer. I travel a lot to go watch our guys. And that just kind of goes back to the, the whole relationship and trust aspect. I want those guys to know that, you know, I'm going to support them even when they're not just with me. So even if that's with other sports that they may play with our school, uh, but also in the AAU uh, circuit as well. So if there's a game and there's a weekend that I can get to and watch some multiple guys play and watch some, watch some guys perform at that level, I'm, I'm going to be there and make sure they know I'm sitting, I'm their biggest cheerleader. Uh, and I think that's really helped uh, our program out as far as that relationship with high school coaches and, and AAU coaches. Uh, my name is Hank Peppers. I'm a uh, head boys basketball coach at Lafette High School. Uh, I'm entering my eighth year um, head coach. Uh, I served as the assistant for three years uh, with Tommy Swanson, who actually was my high school coach. And then um, I was his assistant for three years and then uh, at Lafette and then got the head coaching job and uh, you know the rest is history. Um, well, I tell you, it was I couldn't have 
uh, I could not have coached with a better um, person to kind of let me, he, he gave me so much responsibility, uh, you know, coming up, you know, as his assistant. And then I felt, you know, I felt like he was grooming me uh, the whole time. And, uh, you know, and put me in situations to, you know, either plan practice or lead practice or, you know, make crucial decisions. And, uh, you know, and he actually came back and he was my assistant um, for a few years, you know, uh, you know, in 2017, 18, you know, when we won uh, the first region championship in like, uh, almost 30 years at the Fed, he was my assistant. So it kind of, you know, came full circle. Um, well, returners, um, you know, of course, uh, you know, we're blessed to have uh, several starters coming back. We've got Aiden Hathaway, of course, um, you know, and I'm, I'm sure we'll talk more about him, but, uh, you know, back-to-back -back region player of the year, um, you know, ranked the number one uh, forward in Georgia. Uh, you know, we're very, uh, you know, very blessed to have him coming back. Junior Barber, uh, he's taken his game leaps and bounds. Um, I mean, from his jumper to his to his handles. I mean, just every part of his game is defense, athleticism. Um, he's on another level now. Uh, Jalen Ramsey, true point guard. Um, you know, he's been on varsity since a fresh, freshman. He's been starting since he was a sophomore. And, um, you know, as a uh, true point guard, sets his teammates up well. Uh, we're also returning Zach Barrett, who started for us uh, last season at the two guard. Um, excellent shooter. Excellent shooter, and he kind of, you know, found his role as the season went on and shot more and more. But uh, he had a huge summer for us, and um, he's just another weapon. And then we got some other pieces that, uh, you know, I, I just I know are going to surprise a lot of people. Uh, Jaden Morris, uh, it's a name you'll hear a lot, uh, you know, over the next couple of years. Uh, he can really play inside, outside. He can shoot it. He can post up. He's relentless on the boards. Great defender, communicator. Practices hard every day. Uh, Jordan Kennerly, you know he's a uh, he's probably you know six foot six one, but he is he jumps out of the gym. You know he can guard any position, rebounder, hustle player. Um, and then we have got so you know we're blessed that you know, we only lost one senior last year. In the last two seasons, we've had you know an extended season, you know uh, making it to the Elite Eight of the playoffs the last two years, well, guys have got so many minutes and so much experience that, um, and there's no substitute for game experience, and you know, and the practices you have in the playoffs are a lot more intense and a lot more focused than just a normal regular season practice. So these guys have grown leaps and bounds, you know, from the times, you know, and I'm talking about our role players, our supporting cast, they're, they're all on another level. So when we scrimmage, you know, um, you can sell some tickets to some of our you know, practice scrimmages because it's, you know, that competitive. And, uh, you know, very blessed. I've got, you know, some great assistant coaches around me. Um, you know, my younger brother, Jesse Peppers, he's one of my assistants. Uh, Chris Logan, uh, he's been with me for several years as assistant. I've got uh, Caleb Perry, and uh, who joined with us last year, but he's been, you know, a blessing uh, uh, to our staff. And then we've had a new uh, guy who I used to coach, uh, Caleb Weaver, who's going to be coaching our freshman team. So we've got a bunch of coaches and players that are all uh, pulling in the same direction, you know, and that's what it takes, you know, because you got, uh, you know, anybody pulling against you with from the inside, you know, that always will get you beat. Um, well, I, that's, you know, honestly, I think that's as much of a challenge as the basketball. You know, if it was just basketball, the job, everybody's coaching job would be so much easier, but it's not, you know. Because um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, geniuses at the game of basketball that don't know people. And, um, you know, they don't know how to connect or relate to different people. Because not everybody's the same, and you cannot coach everybody the same. Because um, uh, backgrounds are different, and personalities are different, you know. And kids are different now than they were 10 years ago, much less even before that. Um, so, uh, to get them to buy in, um, I think the first thing you got to do is buy into them. Um, and you got to invest in them. Uh, you got to connect. Uh, and it's got to be genuine. Um, you can't fake it. Kids, you know, they can tell if you're faking and um, if you're not sincere. So you really got to care about the kid, number one. And then you got to, you got to let your passion be seen. By them. They got to know how bad you want and how, you know, how hard you're going to work. Um, because uh, you know we're we're in the gym 
Monday through Friday, you know, since the beginning of August at 6.30 a.m. working. You know, um, four at a time just drilling and shooting thousands and thousands of jumpers. Um, because they know how hard we'll work and how much we want it and it's contagious. And then, you know, we've been blessed with players over the years that, you know, adopt that, you know, hard work and philosophy. And then if you're, you know, a freshman or sophomore and you see these older guys, you know, all region, you know, all state or whatever, putting in the work, well, they see the recipe, well, that's what I got to do to, to get to that level. So it kind of, you know, uh, pays it forward to your next class. Well, I tell you, um, it was a uh, it was an interesting year for everybody with the quarantines and you know, uh, you know, getting shut down. You know, we actually got quarantined as a team, you know, for a couple weeks, and it was uh, it was brutal because you know I'm obsessive, and, and pretty much by this point, our whole team and my coaching staff is as well, and you know, s sitting around and not being able to practice for a couple weeks. I mean, we were. I was constantly talking, to, I know they were probably sick of hearing from me every day, I was, you know, encouraging them, hey, you know, uh, are you going to run in your driveway, are you doing this, or doing that, or watching game film. We really, you know, during, while we were sitting down, we were heavy and film, heavier than normal. Um, but it was just, uh, you know, it was a hand that everybody was dealt, you know, and you just really tried to have, you know, handle it the best you could, you know, and we were fortunate that you know, after mid-December, it really didn't affect us. We were so you know precautious with everything, you know, our social distancing, the way we rode the bus, the wearing masks. I mean, it was just an added hurdle that you kind of had to balance. And uh, you know, with time, I thought we got to where we handled it as well as we could. Um, it, it's really. You know, it's been a, a combination of things. Um, one, you know, I always, you know, uh, I thank God for putting me in the situation I'm in. Uh, I've, had, I've been around a lot of great coaches, um, you know, and a lot of great players. And, uh, one of the first things I did whenever I got to Lafette, um, I got a group of fourth and fifth grade boys, and I got them started playing travel ball. So I was coaching high school, and then, you know, after high school practice, I would, you know, keep the gym open and coach a rec team. And then, you know, as I got fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, we were in AAU tournaments and playing because, you know, uh, the best way to really improve it, to grow is, I think, internal. you got, you got to, you know, build from the end and get your own guys better. It's so easy to look at everybody else and think, you know, well, this guy's better or this guy's better than us. But really, you know, it, it's how much you invest in what you got. So, uh, you know, they got seventh grade and eighth grade in the group, which was all, you know, they kids and you know, they're dominating the middle school, going undefeated, you know, really not having any close games. You know, and then they come in as freshmen and, uh, you know, we had several freshmen starting on the varsity level. And, and you know, we, we had a very solid season with that. And then um, the following year when they entered their sophomore year, you know, they were, you know, we went 23 and five, uh, you know, um, State playoffs. We made it to the Sweet 16 that year. We won, hosted, you know, and won the first uh, home state playoff game, you know, uh, at, in Lafette history. And then, you know, um, since then, once we did that, it kind of, you know, it just ramped up the excitement and the energy, and it, and it went all the way down through the youth. And um, you know, and with that, with that going on, we, there was groups started with, you know, the younger group and the group below them of AAU and travel ball and just. And it's not just travel ball. I mean, we're doing fundamental skills sessions and things to get better because it's not just all playing games. I mean, you've got to put in the skill work too. Um, so, uh, so we, we got in a situation where once those guys that I've been coaching for so long were sophomores, we had that successful season. Then the next year, you know, we went uh, 25 and three. Uh, we won the region championship. It uh, hosted three rounds of state playoffs on our home court. Um, well, we lost in the Elite Eight to um, to ups and Lee who at the time they were ranked 12th in the United States, you know, and we had a uh, sellout crowd. I mean, there was people, you know, I mean, in the rafters. I mean, we had a uh, gym with people on top of people, you know. And then, uh, you know, we were very blessed the next year, you know, we went 24 and three. And then that year after that, uh, we went 25 and three again, region champs again, elite eight again. 
And then this past season, you know, COVID, uh, you know, we due to COVID, we kind of had to cancel a couple games. We finished the season 22 and two. Um, we dropped down to 3A, which is a tough, uh, you know, a tough basketball region, especially last year. There was four different teams ranked in the top 10 in the state. Um, and we were, you know, fortunate we won that region and then made it to the Elite Eight again, hosted, you know, out of the Fed High School, three rounds of state. And we, uh, we lost to Cross Creek in a close game, and they were the eventual state champs last year. So, you know, I've, I've been very proud of what we've accomplished. But, uh, you know, if I've had to sum it up just one thing, I'd say it's the expectation to win. You know, and, we, and I preach it. We got it posted every – you can't turn your head without seeing a sign or something that says it. You know, expect to win. Uh, but, but there is a difference, you know. Uh, I'd say majority of teams going to games hoping that they'll win the game or, you know, or it would be great if we pull this one out or this or that. But um, we really expect to win, you know. And I feel like if you're, if you're really strong in that belief, you know, you're going to find ways to make it happen. You know, as a player, as a coach, you know, if you get everybody believing and that's your expectation, you tend to rise to that level. In Hathaway, there's never a dull moment. Um, he, uh, you know, I, he's been a blessing uh, on me personally, and, and I hope uh, I hope he'd say that I've been one on him uh, because he is a uh, he's one of a kind person. He's one of a kind of player. Um, uh, as far as, you know, just to talk about the player aspect, uh, he's worked so hard. I remember, you know, I remember Aiden, you know, working with him when he was in third and fourth grade and just, he just always had a knack for being in the right place at the right time and scoring. But uh, his freshman year, he was on JV. Um, I didn't start dressing him on varsity until halfway through the season, you know, because um, he played so well on JV. We brought him up and he dressed. And he was like a hot man, you know, in a lot of ways. Uh, but it got to a point, you know, like I said, the last month of the season where our varsity guys, we, you know, were a very successful varsity team at that time. The varsity guys couldn't guard it. And he was just, you know, his confidence started to grow, but he was also um, just the most competitive person I've ever, I've ever been around. I mean, he is, it doesn't matter. You know, I hear the expression of he wouldn't care if he's playing against his mother. Aiden really wouldn't. Now, he wouldn't care if he's playing against his mother, his girlfriend, he doesn't care. Um, he's relentless, and that's contagious, you know, because uh, when, you know, one of your big dogs is that competitive and that fiery at practice just as well as games, well, you know, you want to rise to that level to meet him. So it's, so it's really, it's created, you know, it just pushed our culture to a, to a new level, um, you know, and he is, uh, you know, he's one that you can get on, you can challenge, and he'll play better. And it gives your team a little sense of accountability because they're like, well, because if you ever get on an aim like that, you know, he'll hold anybody accountable. And, um, you know, because because uh, it motivates them to play harder and play better. Uh, you know, just hit a new level. And I'm, I'm not surprised about, uh, you know, anything, any of his accolades, because I see how hard he works. Um, you know, I said we're Monday through Friday in the gym at 6.30. Well, he tries to get in every group, you know, and stay on their allows us four at a time. Well, you know, Aiden's, He's one that tries to get in every workout, you know, and um, uh, we're not going to tell him no, so, because uh, he wants to get better, and then it makes everybody else, you know, work harder. But, you know, as a basketball player, he can do it all. I mean, his range is deep now, I mean, he can shoot off the catch, off the dribble, he can right, he can left, mid-range, floaters, post-up. Um, he jumps out of the gym, he can finish with either hand. You know, he's, just, he's a very special player, he's a phenomenal rebounder. I mean, he just, he finds the ball, he plays hard, and, um, you know, every coach, you know, needs a chance to coach a player like Aiden Hathaway. What can people expect? Um, well, I, ex I expect, we expect to be the best. Now, with that said, we expect to work hard on everybody. I mean, um, you know, I really, there's a lot of good teams in our region. You know, there's a lot of good teams everywhere. You know, in boys basketball, anybody can beat anybody. So that's why you got to try to outwork everybody. Um, you know, but uh, but I expect to win because, uh, you know, and if you want to win, you got to do the little things consistently every day. You know, everybody wants to win when the season gets there. You know, everybody expects to be good at the beginning of the season. You know, while the excitement, energy, everything's still new. But when you hit a little rough patch, which way do you go? Which way does the team go? You know, so that's why I think you've got to roll your sleeves up and go to work 
365 days a year if you want to really, you know, uh, you know, reap the benefits from that. Um, but uh, but no, I'm very excited. Uh, there's a lot of great, you know, individual players in our region. There's, you know, uh, very solid teams, you know, uh, top to bottom, you know. So uh, I'm excited, but uh, I love the team that we've got. Uh, you know, we had a, uh, you know, very solid summer. We went uh, 25 and two this summer and played, you know, some very, very tough competition all over the place. Um, you know, uh, in, the, in the two losses, uh, uh, we were missing some guys, one of which was Aiden. Uh, he had a sprained ankle, and uh, we set him out a couple games. So, uh, and, you know, point guard and two guard, Jalen Rams and Zach Barrett, they were, you know, out of town. So, uh, it wasn't our full team at that point. So, I really like our uh, defensive identity with the team we've got. The effort is just, um, you know, playing as hard or harder than any team I've ever, you know, you know been privileged to coach. So uh, when your effort's on point and your defense and your rebounding is there, you know, a lot of times offense, you know, will take care of itself if you do all the other little things right. And, you know, we're just excited, you know, and, and looking forward to try to keep on getting better every day. And, uh, you know, I've always felt like if you make your focus just get better, get yourself better every day, you know, the end result will kind of take care of itself as long as you're putting in the work.